Hey everyone, Hans here. Today a quick video on a clay build that I recently built. It's a, um, I thought it was a pretty interesting build. It's nothing too exciting, but there are a couple of things in there that I actually recorded a video on earlier, a couple of weeks ago using Glassdoor data. And um, now I'm pretty much leveraging the same data, just uh, getting it in a slightly different way. So figured I would show everyone and just wanted to, to um, uh, walk you through a clay table that is more or less around the recruitment space. And notice a space that a lot of people um, are struggling to generate leads for or generate leads in. So hopefully this video this table will help you um, help you out a little bit if that's a niche that you find yourself in uh, but yeah as always excited to show you the table so let's dive in here's a table in clay and um there's a couple things that we did in here it's a um uh, we just grabbed uh, like a chunk of the solo addressable market of this client from apollo so there's your usual apollo data in there then what we did is, um, what I did is score the company based on how many jobs they have open. So in this case, if they have uh, 20 or more jobs currently open on LinkedIn, then um, they're a good fit. There are a couple of other sources for job data that we could layer on top as well to see how many jobs they've opened in total. But um, uh, here in this case, initially we went with LinkedIn. Then what we did is we grabbed the extra job description from uh from one of the jobs that they have open um we're going to be running uh some analysis on that later which is not something i can really talk about here but uh, another scoring um the same metric that uh that we went with here is looking at just how long the description is so if it's a really short description, then um, that's something that we want to um, um, to be you know mindful of. And here in this case, this company had they have about two thousand jobs open, which is pretty um, uh, pretty incredible. And they have really short job descriptions, so that could be an indicator um, that they're you know they're overwhelmed within their hiring department. Um, no time to really optimize their job descriptions. So definitely um, like one you know one really important scoring point that we're keeping in mind here. And in case you're wondering how to do that in Clay, just a simple formula where we get the word count from the actual job description that we took from the um, LinkedIn enrichment. Then we're finding their ATS on, um, they're usually built with. So for that, just basically plugged in the key, um, a keyword search for the main ATSs that we wanted to find so that we know which ATS they're likely using right now. And then one of the scoring factor that we took into account was how many people they have within their recruitment team. Um, so looking for job um, keyword uh, matches that include recruitment, recruiting, talent, uh, hiring, that type of thing. And then obviously if a company has, you know, in this case, 2000 or maybe 200 or 700 jobs open um, and they have a very low um, headcount in the recruitment department, then they're more likely to be uh, overwhelmed and they're more likely to need some help in that department. So um, in this case, um, um, there's a, we could apply a certain ratio. So amount of jobs they have open to, you know, how many recruiters they have. Uh, so in this case, this person would need to um, fill 84 different jobs or openings, which um, to me sounds pretty, um, pretty overwhelming. So that's something that we're, uh, that we're keeping an eye out for here. And then what I did is I, I used ClayGen to find the company's Glassdoor page. And um, the prompt that I used there was um, perform a Google search using the following search criteria and find me this company in a Glassdoor interview page. And then the search criteria or search, um, uh, you know, however you want to call that, um, is the, um, uh, the search operator, I should say, is site glassdoor.com slash interview. 
and then uh, the company name. So that is the actual Google search. So you basically would type into Google, you know, site glassdoor.com slash interview space, and then the company name. That is because the way these are structured is not just simply, you know, um, uh, the company name, like sometimes they're registered as, you know, um, Clay LLC, um, or, you know, however they would register their Glassdoor or however their Glassdoor company page would be registered. So we're finding that one. And then, um, here we go. So we're telling it's vital that in your output, you only provide me with the actual URL, no other information whatsoever, no other words, explanation or characters. If you need to confirm accuracy, the company website is website. So that is something that is often mentioned on the actual Glassdoor page. The LinkedIn page is that and their location is company city. Again, those are things that are mentioned on the, um, uh, the Glassdoor page. So that is something Clay Gents could potentially look for. Um, and then we're running that, then it will give us the actual page. We're using a formula just, just to be sure to extract that because sometimes it would still like here, it would add like the brackets around it, or, um, uh, it would still add text to it. So basically it is using a formula to say, um, from, you know, the result from the clay gem, just get me the URL that con the, the entire URL that contains glassdoor.com and the formula actually, you know, grabs that for me. Then we have their Glassdoor page and a couple other things. So another score factors are they currently hiring for recruiters? So imagine they have a lot of open jobs. Um, they're, they don't have a lot of recruiters on staff. They're hiring for low recruiters. They're clearly underwater. Um, or maybe they don't have a lot of open jobs. They do maybe, um, have like zero or one recruiters, but they have a lot of open roles for recruiters. That means that they're about to ramp up hiring. So that's another really strong indicator as well that we could use. And then, um, employee headcount growth. So this is the headcount growth for the last six months. And that is just something that we're using saying, okay, um, notice that you've been growing this for that fast. Um, it's like, it's a scoring thing and also something that we could leverage in the emails. And then the data that I mentioned earlier, the Glassdoor data, in this case, we're using Zenros to get it just because we're only looking for one or basically two data points Now there are multiple ways you can get it, but to actually run an Appify to set up that search, um, that would not allow me to keep this table running, add new leads and automatically get that data for them as well. I would then, you know, as I would add new leads to this table, I would need to take those new leads there, you know, I would need to find their Glassdoor page, which could be done automatically, but then I would need to use Appify to scrape, to, um, to scrape that unless I would, um, I don't know, set up some construction with you know, adding it to Google Sheets and then whenever a new rows is texted in Google Sheets, scrape it and F5. Like I didn't want to do that. So in the end, I just needed two metrics for now as an additional scoring um, well, metric. And those are the positive rev um, counts and the negative counts of the interview experience. And then obviously if, you know, they're, the negative count is really high and especially in this case, you can see uh, there are only four positive counts, 147 negatives. Um, then that is again, a really strong indicator that this company, they need help with hiring in their hiring process, in their interview process, uh, we find the right candidates, we're providing a, a, um, a good candidate experience. So that is something that is very interesting for us in running this campaign. Now, um, Zen Rose, there's nothing fancy here. Um, Glassdoor does have a, um, uh, their security is really tight, advanced, however you want to call that. So we do need to render JavaScript and ha and use uh, premium proxies, but um, scraping goes really, really well. Like basically no blocks here in case of an error is because it didn't find the right glass door base, which is fine every now and then, like the error rate is super low. Um, and, uh, then we're getting the positive and negative counts. And again, that is something that we use for scoring. So that is a clay table that I built for, uh, one of our clients and just shows you that, um, you know, there are multiple ways in a lot of cases to get specific data 
and depending on you know how you want to use it um like a certain method could be better like i said in this case just because i want to make sure that this table can keep running if i add additional leads then getting it this way makes a lot of sense and a good part about this as well is that um i can still get all the other data that i would get from epify as well it's just slightly less structured there's a lot of data in here that zenrose is getting me and like almost none of it is really you know useful we really have to search for the data that i'm looking for but again once that is set up then it just you know can keep running as i'm adding new data so there are definitely benefits to using zenrose as well um zenrose isn't really cheap but you know cheap enough and then again, running the Appify uh, Glassdoor scraper isn't really cheap either, I found. So you can scrape about 600 pages for like around 10 bucks, which um, I think with Zenrose you can probably do. I didn't actually do the math on it, but um, you can likely do that a bit cheaper as well with Zenrose. So that's why we went with Zenrose. Um, that was the clay table that I wanted to run everyone through. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions about anything that I showed you or how and why I set things up, then, um, you know, as always, just leave me in the comments. For now, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye-bye.